Hello everyone, so welcome to another Python tutorial series, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Yosna Engine, the 3D Python game engine, and this is going to be tutorial number 7, use your input from keyboard. So let's first create our rotating cube, and we could just write from Yosna, port star, since we're using the Yosna module, and we're also going to import random. So from random, import randint. And now we're going to create our update function, and what this function is going to do is that it's going to uh, get called every single frame. So we can write an update function, define update, and before we write anything in here, I'm going to create my window. So create a window. So I can write app is equal to Yersena. Uh We're going to create a cube, so cube is equal to an entity. And what this entity is going to be, so the model is going to be equal to a model is going to be equal to a cube. And we're going to set the color equal to a red. So color is equal to color.red. And we're going to add a texture. So texture is going to be equal to, and the texture that we're going to be using is a white cube. Great. And now we can set the scale to 2. And this will scale the x, y, and z dimensions uh, by 2. And then finally, we can just write app.run. So now that we have this down, let's go back into our update function and add some code. So in order to just rotate the cube, we could write cube.rotation underscore, and then whichever axis you want to rotate it around. And in this case, I'm going to rotate it around the y-axis. And this is equal to cube.rotation underscore y plus time.dt multiplied by 100. And now if I run this, it should give us a rotating cube around the y-axis. And there you go. Now what if we want to control when the cube starts to rotate and when it stops rotating? That is, is it possible to have a control by pressing some keys on the keyboard? Well, the simple answer is yes. So there are three scenarios for this, and we're going to talk about each of them one by one. So the first scenario is the cube will only rotate when you press some key. As long as the key is pressed, the cube will keep rotating. And once the key is released, the cube will stop rotating. Let's look at scenario two. Uh, the cube will only rotate when you press some key, but it will only rotate one time each time that you press the key. Holding the key will not make the cube keep rotating. And scenario three. The cube will only rotate when you press some key, and once the rotation start, starts, it will not stop until a different key is pressed. So let's talk about scenario 1. In scenario 1, the cube is going to keep rotating as long as you're holding down the key. So in this update function, let's create an if statement. Oops. Let's create an if statement. So if held underscore keys, and then whichever key we want. So if we're holding the uh, R key down, then we want to rotate this cube. So if I save this and run, as long as I'm holding this R on the keyboard, the cube will rotate. Otherwise, the second I let go, the cube stops rotating. Now why is this? This is because Yersna has an array that checks if a key is being pressed and which key is being pressed. So this array has one entry for each key on the keyboard, and by default, its values are set to 0. Now when a key is pressed, its value is set to 1. Now, and when it is released again, it is set to 0. For example, when the R key is pressed, like I'm pressing it right now, the value is 1, so the if condition will be true. And then the rotation statement will be executed, and the key will start rotating. Now if R is released, the value is set to 0, so the if condition is false. And therefore, the cube will stop rotating. Now, let's try holding down a key uh, to try and change the color of the cube. So, instead of R, let's change it to C. And I'm going to comment this one out. So, I'm going to generate a random number. So, for red, it's going to be go to rand int 0 to 255. I'm going to do the same thing with green is equal to rand int 0 to 255 and blue is equal to rand int 0 to 255. And now I'm just generating random RGB values. 
and I'll set the cube's color, so cube.color, equal to color.rgb, and these values, so red, green, blue. So I save this, and I'm going to run it. Now when the C key is pressed and held, the color will keep changing. There you go. And when the key is released, or a different key is pressed, the color is going to remain the same. It's not going to change. Now let's look at scenario 2. The cube will only rotate when you press some key, but it will only rotate one time each time the key is pressed. Now what we could do is get an input function for this. So let me delete this real quick. Save. And instead of using an update function, I'm going to be using define input. And then whichever key as a parameter. Now if the key is equal to R, I'm going to rotate the cube. So cube.rotation y is equal to the previous cube.rotation y plus time.dt multiplied by 100. And now, whenever I press the R key, so if I press the R key, you'll notice that uh, the cube rotates once each time I press it. And when I hold this R key, it's only going to rotate once. So now, I could just keep pressing it and it will only rotate. Now let's talk about the third scenario. The cube will only rotate when you press some other key. And once the rotation starts, it will only keep rotating until a different key is pressed. So this one, instead of, uh, let's add in our update function again. So to find update, and we're going to create a global speed. So global speed variable. And we're going to create the speed in here. So speed is equal to zero. And this is where we initialize the global variable. Now in this update function, all I'm going to do is rotate the cube. So cube.rotation underscore y is equal to the previous cube.rotation underscore y plus time.dt multiplied by the speed. And in this input function, I'm going to create this global variable. So global speed. And I'm going to check if held keys and uh, this is going to be R. And if I'm holding R, then all I want to do is set the speed equal to 100. Great. So now if I run this, and I press R, now the cube is just rotating. But how do I make it stop? So if I press R again, nothing's going to change. It's going to keep rotating. How do I make it stop? Now let's say I press, so if held keys s, so here I added another if statement, so if I hold s, or if I press s, I'll set the speed equal to zero. And let me run this. So you notice that when I press R, it moves, now when I press s, the cube stops. And I could keep switching between these two keys, and the cube will stop and run. And to summarize, uh, in this video, we talked about how a user can control a cube from the keyboard in three scenarios. In scenario one, the cube only rotates when you press some key. As long as the key is pressed, the cube will keep moving, or keep rotating. Once the key is released, the cube will stop rotating. And in scenario two, the cube will only rotate when you press some key, but it will only rotate one time every time the key is pressed. Only the key will not make the cube keep rotating. And in scenario 3, the cube will only rotate when you press some key, and once the rotation stops or starts, it will not stop until a different key is pressed. So this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.